Hello, I'm Joaquin Guzman from EO Monterrey, Mexico, and you're watching EO TV. Welcome to EO TV. I'm Andrea Collins. And I'm Randall Mauricio. This is your weekly Entrepreneurs Organization webcast. Hey, so you want to get paid faster? Who, who wouldn't, right? We've got some great insight to share with you today on getting fast payments from your clients. Yeah, and we'll take a look at charitable giving at work and how we can actually increase productivity of your staff. And we'll have a great tip as well from Peter Nixon. It's a jam-packed show, so let's get to it. Yeah. EO Charlotte member Lori Leonard says that getting paid faster is always one of her top priorities, and I'm sure many business owners would agree. Today, she provides some insight on turning your accounts payable into cash payments. Establish a personal relationship. Instruct your accounting staff to contact the accounts payable person as soon as a new client is signed. As they introduce themselves and offer to help your new client staff, establishing a personal relationship with that person is invaluable to your company because you'll always have access to information about your account. Ask questions up front. Do they have an automatic billing system that requires invoices to be in a specific format? Do they require a purchase order number or vendor number on invoices? All of these questions should be answered up front. Create a standard list of questions and make sure that they're answered in full before you move forward with the client. Set automated reminders to go out to the accounts payable contact a week before your invoice is due. Add a personal message to remind them that you're happy with their business and want to continue working with them. And lastly, Lori says make sure paying you is easy. If your payment process is complex and requires a lot of steps, your invoice might go to the bottom of the pile. But following Lori's simple steps, you'll be on your way to quick receivables and will build better relationships with your clients by increasing the communication between you. In this member experience, Chris Morgan, EO New Jersey member and president of Corbo Technologies, Inc., shares his experience on how a poorly planned partnership model almost killed his company. He shares what he's learned about proper planning. I ended up uh, having brought on a partner uh, a number of years ago, thinking that that was a great way to uh, to really establish ourselves and move forward. Uh, and it ended up being a, a, a total disaster for us. Uh, you know, it was uh, something where you know I basically handed ownership over to uh, to a partner, and uh, it didn't take entrepreneurship uh, and the company as seriously as I had, and, and didn't have as much vested interest in what was going on. And uh, that partnership lasted about a year before uh, the company was basically being driven into. The the ground uh, and uh, you know we needed to, to take a step back uh, needed to remove him from the company uh, and we basically had to, to restart the entire company again uh, and uh, and build it back from the ground up uh, so much damage had been done so uh, we really went back to basics you know what we were particularly good at uh, and now we're you know back on a really nice uptrend so uh, you know you, you learn as you as you move ahead you make some mistakes and uh, you regroup and, and move forward Supporting a charitable cause can have multiple benefits for your business. EO Atlanta member Jared Hyman is a perfect example of this. He started a foundation within his company because he wanted to support a charity. What Jared didn't expect is that his foundation would improve employee productivity and increase his potential client base. Take a look. Hi, I'm Jared Hyman, founder and president of InfoServe in Atlanta. We're a full service market research firm specializing in online employee and customer surveys. In 2006, my company started the InfoServe Foundation so that we could share a portion of our profits with deserving charities in our community, and it's been a huge success. The best part, of course, is knowing that we're doing the right thing by supporting those less fortunate than we are. If you're considering starting a foundation at your company, I can give you the following advice. Number one, be sure to draft a document that outlines how your foundation will be funded and what processes will be in place for determining each year how much of these funds will be donated or retained, and also which specific charities the foundation will support. For example, at InfoServe, we fund our foundation with a fixed percentage of profits each quarter, and then we meet each December as a company to decide what dollar amount will be donated and what will be retained for future giving. Number two, 
don't be shy about it. We built some content on our website about our foundation, which gets frequent compliments from our, from our visitors. We also put out press releases each year, announcing the, ch the charities we've decided to support. Good PR certainly isn't our primary motivation for the foundation, but it's a nice side effect. Number three, build it into your culture. Generously sharing the fruits of our company's success is one of our five core values. It's important that your written values, your culture, and the decisions you make are all consistent. I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, please feel free to shoot me an email with any questions. Thanks. Peter Nixon shares three tips that will help you with your next negotiation. I've been asked to speak on negotiation for the members, and there's three things I'd like to share with you. If you're negotiating, first thing you want to do is ask a lot of questions. There's always stuff you don't know, and you need to find out what are their needs, what's important, what are the issues, ask lots of questions. Second point, be compassionate. Especially in this recession, there's a lot of problems out there, and the more compassionate you are, the more you're going to find out about what really matters. And third, persist, persist, persist. Be prepared to push for what you want at least three times. They're going to concede, and that's tip of the week. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much to Chris Morgan for his member experience and Lori Leonard for her insights on getting clients to pay up faster. Yeah, I like that. And Jared <laughs> Hyman and Peter Nixon, thanks for your ideas as well. We hope you got a lot of value out of that. I know I did. Definitely. And we want you to keep coming back for more because next week we have the experiences of two EOers who expanded their business overseas. And Jim Collins is back with another tip of the week. Well, I can't wait for Jim. But until then, remember, what you believe you can achieve. So you can go as far as your mind takes you. So don't limit yourself, huh? I think my mind is telling me to go for a latte. Cool. I'll race you. My mind's telling me uh, to go to the kitchen. Come on, I'll race you. See ya.